this person or company or book or religion for sexualizing children. What's that? You can't answer until I tell you the name? Why is that? Oh, it's because depending on what the name is, your moral standards will suddenly change. So, if I tell you that the name in the cup is Netflix, and that Netflix has sexualized children in the film Cuties, you'll condemn Netflix and call for a boycott. But if I tell you that the name in the cup is Muhammad, or the Quran, or Islam, and that Muhammad and the Quran and Islam have sexualized children, you won't condemn them. Instead, you'll condemn anyone who so much as questions Muhammad and the Quran and Islam for sexualizing children. Oh, you don't think that Islam sexualizes children? Let's read Sahih al-Bukhari, 5133. There are way, way more passages than this, but let's keep it simple this time. Notice the chapter heading. Giving one's young children, not adults, giving one's young children in marriage is permissible. Why? By virtue of the statement of Allah, and for those who have no monthly courses, no monthly period, i.e. they are still immature, that's Surah 65, verse 4 of the Quran. So, why is it okay to let someone marry your young daughter? Because the Quran talks about marrying girls who are too young to have a monthly period. And the idda, the idda is the waiting period to divorce your wife if you've already had sex with her, and the idda for the girl before puberty, before puberty, before puberty, is three months in the above verse. So the Quran is laying down guidelines for divorcing prepubescent girls. And now, to illustrate the Quran's claim that marrying and having sex with a prepubescent girl is perfectly acceptable, Bukhari presents this hadith. Narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. According to Surah 33, verse 21 of the Quran, Muhammad is an excellent pattern of conduct for men. But Muhammad had sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. So, did Muhammad sexualize young girls? Absolutely. Does the Quran sexualize young girls? Absolutely. Does Islam sexualize young girls? Absolutely. Is it wrong to sexualize little girls? Let me guess, you still can't answer, right journalists? Right politicians? Right educators? Right entertainers? Right athletes? You can't say it's wrong because that would be Islamophobic. You can't say it's right because you'd be promoting pedophilia. So, you stay quiet. No, actually you don't. You condemn the people who condemn the ideology that sexualizes children. But when Netflix sexualizes 11-year-old girls who, let's face it, by Islamic standards, are practically senior citizens, suddenly your moral compasses start working again. Why does anyone ever bother to listen to you, you giant steaming pile of hypocrites and cowards? You want to know who's responsible for sexualizing children? It's the journalists and the politicians, and the educators, and the entertainers, and the athletes who protect ideologies that sexualize children. That's right. It's you. The ruling is that it is not condoned in Islam. No verse in the Quran says to marry a child and, when speaking of marriage, the word is always to marry a woman, and to treat her with love and, Kindness and not to inherit her against her will. Quran 419. A woman is a female who reaches both maturity and puberty. However, there are two things that have made people believe that child. Marriage is a part of Islam. One stems from culture, where the practice was to make intentions that when a girl reaches both maturity and puberty, then it was permitted to have consensual sex with her along with caring and providing for her as agreed upon in the marriage contract or customs. 
Some cultures may have taken it farther and engage in sexual behavior prior to both maturity and puberty and against the will of the child. Once such cultural people embraced Islam, they would use certain hadith information about the ways of the Prophet Muhammad to justify their cultural practice of child marriage. The hadith used are the ones where it says that Muhammad married Aisha when she was six and consummated or had sex with her when she was nine. Some Muslims have unfortunately accepted this hadith to be true and authentic. Therefore, there are Muslims who have been misguided to believing that child marriage is a part of Islam. What they do not know is that the hadith is not authentic. One of the narrators, Hisham ibn Yurwab, has been classified as being unreliable as he got older because his age affected his memory. This is where most of the hadith come from. The reports also come from Iraq, which makes it more dubious as the Prophet and his companions are most likely in the region of Mecca and Medina. Additionally, the reports do not come from the Prophet or Aisha herself. Another person in the chain of narrators is al Amash, who has been classified as being guilty of tadless concealing the name of the reporter whom you get your information. In short, there is clear evidence that the hadith about Muhammad marrying and consummating a marriage by sex with Aisha as a child is false and unreliable. Thus it is not an Islamic teaching or practice but a cultural practice that has been supported by some Muslims by using false hadith. For more information, there are several books on the subject such as Muhammad, His Character and Conduct and Quat by Adil Salahi. Additionally, there are books that explain the science of hadith and its classification, such as A Textbook of Hadith Studies and Quat by Muhammad Hashim Kamawali, and Fundamentals of Hadith Interpretation and Quat by Amin Asan Islahi. Another method is to just Google the names mentioned above in relation to the subject.